This offseason for the Baltimore Ravens, it started off really, really slow. And it had us thinking like, man, like, hey, wake up, do something, please. But then when it hit that turning point, it really never, ever stopped. And we went from being sad down in the dumps to, oh, yeah, let's go, let's get it. And now the Ravens have given us so much to look forward to this upcoming season. But what should we be looking forward to? What should we be thinking about when it comes to these Baltimore Ravens this upcoming season? Well, I could tell you some things, but it'd be best if you heard it from somebody else. So in this episode, I brought on a very, very special guest to help us talk about all the things that we're looking forward to with our beloved Baltimore Ravens. And we doing this one for the flock, baby. Yeah, this feels like a dream. All right, so team, keep it clean. Very, very special guest in the building. Uh, my guy Noah from For the Flock. Uh, first, before we get into things, introduce everybody to yourself. Let them know who you are and exactly what it is that you do. Yeah, so uh, as Engraven said, the, the OG Ravens legend YouTuber, man, been watching. Man, I got to tell you, man, I've been watching you for years and I got a lot of respect for what you do. Uh, and I appreciate you having me on the channel. It's a huge honor. Uh, my name is Noah. Uh, I have a channel called For the Flock. Try to do daily content um, as much as I can. All things Baltimore Ravens. And uh, I just love football. Love the Baltimore Ravens. And uh, love talking ball. And wh what made you get started with a channel? So uh, I actually, years ago, probably six seven years ago when i joined the marine corps i started like a military channel um doing like videos for and how to you know get through boot camp what boot camp is like and stuff like that mm -hmm. um and uh just always wanted to start a youtube channel and then um years later i transitioned the channel to a ravens channel i was like super passionate about the ravens love talking about football um so I just started, just started going with it. Um, was really bad at it at first, man. The videos were terrible. And then it just, you know, slowly started to pick up some traction. And here we are. Hey, that's how it goes. We got to get the cringe out the way early. Man. <laughs> now, now, me, I still I still got a lot of cringe that I put in there now, but it's all good. I don't even care no more. Yeah. Well, I, I just accepted, like, I don't care what people think anymore, man. Yeah. I was just going to, yeah. Yeah, especially if you you putting the, together videos that are, especially football videos, you know football fans they're crazy, they super mm -hmm. super crazy. So mm -hmm. if you um if you care like too much about what people think, it's gonna drive you crazy every single time. Every single yeah. video, every single time you press that record button, you're gonna be stressed out. So That's better true, to be man. like, you know what, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. So if they like it, they can watch. If they don't, mm -hmm. they don't have to. <laughs> they, exactly, they can keep it moving. Man. Yeah. But hopefully they don't keep it moving. Hopefully they keep on watching. Man. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But anyway, um, this offseason for these Baltimore Ravens, um, it started off real, real slow. Uh, but then it picked up speed like that. And mm -hmm. it really, I mean, I guess it technically kind of slowed down over the past week or so, but it's still been moving. But what, what was your favorite part of this Baltimore Ravens offseason? Mm, man, that's no. a good question. <laughs> Um, I got to go with the low hanging fruit. You know, I, I thought I'd think of something a little bit more uh, non typical, but the Lamar Jackson extension has to be mm -hmm. my favorite just because it's like, uh, bro, I remember there were so many times where I was like, Lamar's gone. Like yeah, he's, please. he's not coming back. Um, and then there was times where I'd be like, oh no, I think he's coming back. And it was going back and forth. My emotions were all over the place with this whole mm -hmm. thing because yeah. I mean, I, whenever you're a Ravens, whenever you're a fan of a team, you want something to look forward to. Even like mm -hmm. teams that are bad, right? Even teams that like, you know, had a terrible record, they have hope, you know, looking forward to like a draft pick, a new quarterback right. they're going to draft or whoever. But for a while, it felt like the Ravens, like there was just nothing to look forward to because mm -hmm. it was like, are we drafting a quarterback? Are we, you know, going to tag Lamar? Is he even happy? Does he even want to be here? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, you don't want, 
someone to be here just because they're tagged and financially contractually obligated. You want mm -hmm. someone who wants to be here. So there was all that questions. And then all of a sudden, whenever I saw Lamar Jackson, you know, when the Ravens posted that video where he was like, you know, the next couple of years, it's going to be a lot of flop. Oh man. Yeah. Dude, that, <laughs> that hit different. And like it, every, all, all things in the world were good. And it was like, okay, he wants to be here. So yeah, that was, that was probably my favorite. And yeah, especially yeah. like it, the moment, like right there before the draft. Mm -hmm. So it was like, boom, boom. Like, and then it was Zay Flowers. And yeah, just got me fired up all in a hurry. Yeah, yeah, that's true. It like stuff just kept happening back to back to back to back to back. Mm -hmm. um, and, and like you mentioned, when they signed Lamar Jackson, after they signed Lamar Jackson, it, it gave fans something uh, to look forward to. But what are you looking forward to the most uh, from these Baltimore Ravens this upcoming season? Mm. It's got to be Todd Munkin. It's got to oh. be uh, okay. the revamp scheme. I, I, you know, I'm obviously excited for the new weapons, the mm -hmm. new weaponry, Zay Flowers, OBJ, um, these young tight ends, Nelson Aguilar, Rashad Bateman. Like these weapons could be something special. Right. But to me, it's more just a fresh scheme. I mean, sometimes mm -hmm. like you get a new leader and a new energy in the room and all of a sudden it's like, boom, like electricity in the room everyone's fired up again everyone's excited again so that's what i'm looking forward to and we're getting all these reports that todd munkin is like peppy during practices that he's involved that he's you know like running things with passion and that's what gets me fired up is just you know a new offensive scheme because it felt like is it just me or did like each year that we watched greg roman did the offense start to feel like more and more predictable more and more stale yeah. like you know as fans, it's almost like if you know when you see the Ravens line up in a formation and then you have a good <laughs> you know, idea yeah. of what a pl <laughs> the play is going to be, do you not think that NFL defensive coordinators and players that do this for a living and study uh, film know too? So, like, that's my biggest thing is just a fresh injection of the mm -hmm. scheme change. Yeah, that's true. And I'm, I'm I'm looking forward to that as well because I feel like with Greg Roman, he was solid, but um, I feel like the, it, it had been time for a change for a little while now, probably like a couple mm -hmm. years and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Um, and the Ravens, I felt like they were almost loyal to a fault to Giro, but you know, it's, it is what it is at this point. And now, yeah, like you mentioned, they got Todd Munkin. So fresh start for everybody. Now, um, with fresh starts, it's not always smooth sailing right mm -hmm. from the jump. Uh, and with Todd Munkin, he got to install his offense, uh, mm -hmm. this new Ravens offense. So how do you feel about the possible growing pains? And do you think that the growing pains could take a little while to get through? How, how do you think that's going to go as far as this new Ravens offense? You know, that's a really good question. Um, something I hadn't really thought about with there being a new system, new terminology and everything. Mm -hmm. But as soon as you started mentioning that question, I instantly thought of, you know, with Lamar Jackson, there's a certain floor that the offense is going to be like, even if things aren't going perfectly in a game, you know, the Ravens offense is struggling. Lamar Jackson is still going to be Lamar Jackson. And if everything's covered downfield, there's going to be a certain level that the Ravens offense, I just don't think is going to go below. I mean, the talent is just, if, if all else fails, throw it to 89, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like Lamar Jackson and Mark Andrews had that connection um, JK Dobbins is a great running back. So mm -hmm. to me, like the, the floor of the offense is pretty high because you got a, a strong offensive line and stuff starts in the trenches. The only, you know, new spot or, uh, you know, questionable spot is the left guard spot. Mm -hmm. And there's some guys that are serviceable. At least, you know, Patrick McCarry could go in there and start yeah. if he needed to, he's done mm -hmm. it before and not be like a liability on the offensive line. So mm -hmm. I think whenever you have a strong offensive line, and then you have some players with chemistry like Lamar, Dobbins, and Andrews. Even with the other new players around them and the new scheme, I still think there's a certain level of like of success that the Ravens offense will have. Mm, I like that. And when in doubt, throw it to 89. <laughs> now, something that you, you just talked about, um, and I didn't think about that, especially when thinking about this new offense that the Ravens are installing. Um, there are some guys that already have some chemistry. Um, mm -hmm. that being Lamar Jackson and Mark Andrews, Lamar with JK Dobbins, too, even mm -hmm. Lamar Jackson with Rashad Bateman as yep. well. Mm -hmm. Um, so that should make things easier, uh, when it comes to installing a new offense with those guys. And then, of 
course, building up that chemistry with everybody else as mm. well. Now, um, they did sign Odell Beckham Jr. Mm -hmm. uh, you just mentioned Nelson Aguilar. Uh, you also mentioned Zay Flowers a bit earlier. Um, it's still Gus Edwards, Isaiah Likely, mm -hmm. uh, Charlie Kolar, uh, a lot of different guys. Mm -hmm. um, Devin DuVernay. Um, yeah. for, for now, James Prochet, Tylen Wallace. We'll see how things shake out there. But the Ravens have a lot of different options. They do. And that's a good thing. But mm -hmm. do you think that it could be an issue with there being too many mouths to feed? You know, I do. You oh. know, I re I do. I've thought about this. And um, when it comes to it, when you have this many talented pass catchers, there's going to be some guys that may be frustrated. But one thing that you've talked about in your videos before that I wholeheartedly agree with is that winning covers a lot. Um, winning solves a lot of problems. So I believe if the Ravens are winning a lot of ball games and maybe guys aren't getting the targets that they feel that they should get, rightfully mm -hmm. so, you know, if there's a game where Zay Flowers has five catches, Rashad Bateman has six, and Mark Andrews has nine, and then you have OBJ with like one or two, um, I wouldn't surprise me if I saw a game like that, right? Because of the the talent that you have, you know, th there's only one ball, like Todd Munkin made sure he clarified mm -hmm. when it comes to getting the ball to these weapons. But um, I think if the Ravens are winning, um, it's going to create uh, a lot of band-aids on those maybe hurt feelings when it comes to mm -hmm. a lack of a target share or whatever. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, when, yeah, winning does cover up a lot. There's still some emotions involved on the side, but if you win, people mm -hmm. be like, ah, oh, you know what? Yeah. I get over it. I do yeah. want to contribute, but I, right. I get over it. Now, uh, flipping to the defensive side of the ball, how you feeling about that Ravens secondary post-draft? Obviously, Marlon Humphrey's still there, um, and then they signed Rocky Scene, uh, mm -hmm. but they, they drafted uh, Caillou, uh, mm -hmm. but how, and they still got some guys returning, like... Um, Pepe Williams, uh, Jalen Armour Davis, uh, Kevon Seymour, uh, mm -hmm. Daryl Worley. Um, I feel like I'm for maybe Ardarius Washington, Brandon Stevens. Mm -hmm. How are you feeling about this secondary as a whole? I Owner love this. Everything. I love this secondary under one condition. Mm -hmm. That's uh, Marlon Humphrey's health. If Ooh. Marlon Humphrey is healthy, mm -hmm. I feel great about the entire secondary. Okay. You know, at the cornerback two spot opposite of Marlon Humphrey, you know, you got Rocky Sin, who's the perceived starter, but right. you know, I wouldn't sleep on Jalen Armour Davis yet. He's really talented. He's got oh. all the tools. He's a Bama guy. Um, he just had some mental lapses and struggles early on in the season last year and some mm -hmm. injuries. But I mean, Jalen between Jalen Armour Davis, Caillou Blue Kelly, uh, Rocky Sin, uh, even Trayvon Mullen, Lamar's cousin, oh, yeah. some of the Brant Stevens, like the Ravens are going to be like they have enough talent in the room. Um, the only thing that concerns me is if Marlon were to go down, that's like Marlon's the guy that you can trust to erase or at least limit top wide receivers. Mm -hmm. We know we, we play in the division that has Jamar Chase and T Higgins. So oh, my, my thing is, is like, if you can put Marlon on chase and say, bro, just don't give up five touchdowns, like just keep him in check. You know what I'm saying? Like, just do your thing, mm -hmm. keep him in check. You know, he'll have his catches here and there, but keep him in check. And then you can put safety help over the other guys that maybe, you know, you could put Rocky Sin, who's a real physical guy, on a bigger receiver like T. Higgins, and then put some safety help over the top. And then speaking of these safeties, man, I maybe I'm being a homer here. Maybe I got the purple <laughs> shades on. But I believe the Ravens have the best um, duo of safeties and linebackers in the NFL. Oh, and, yeah. oh, oh, man. I, th I thought you were just going to say like AFC North or no. maybe AFC. But in it, oh, no, I, I, I cannot find. I've looked on all the safety duos. There's some close ones. Um, Kyle Hamilton was one of the top graded safeties last year, um, and he's going into year two. Marcus Williams had the most interceptions in hmm. the NFL before he went down with the injury, that wrist injury, and uh, whenever they were playing Cincinnati. Mm -hmm. And um, you got really good depth behind them too. Or Darius Washington, Geno Stone, Brandon Stevens, and then the Ravens linebackers. Man, like I'm looking around, and I know you know the Bengals have a pretty nice duo there with Jermaine Pratt and Logan Wilson. Right. And there's some other teams that have good duos, but like Queen and Roquan's a nasty duo. So I'm feeling great 
about the secondary and the defense as a whole. Now, before we uh, talk about these linebackers, I want to stick mm-hmm. with the safeties for a quick second. Were mm-hmm. you able to hear Chuck Clark's comments? I saw a glimpse of it on Twitter earlier. Yeah. Something about he mm-hmm. felt disrespected right. by some of the comments that were made. Um, yeah, he I don't said he, know. He said he felt disrespected know. by the Ravens. Um, uh-huh. And he said part, part of it was when they drafted Kyle Hamilton. Uh, but he said it also had to do with like money and, and contracts and stuff like that. And he said uh, he felt disrespected from the position that they put him in uh, mm-hmm. versus what he was told. So right. real quick, do you feel like Chuck Clark was put in a sort of tricky position last year with at the um, at safety? Yeah, I do. I mean, that's a tough spot to be in because – He recently was signed to the extension, had two years left on his contract, Mm -hmm. and the Ravens were just in a spot where they couldn't simply turn down Kyle Hamilton. And I don't Mm -hmm. think they went into the draft thinking we're going to take Hamilton or a safety for that matter early. But Mm -hmm. when they saw Kyle Hamilton, who was a top five, top ten prospect, fall to them at 14, Mm -hmm. they were like, I'm sorry, Chuck. Like, I cannot let this type of talent go. But that's the NFL, man. I mean, this happens year after year. Yeah. A young influx of talent comes in. Mm-hmm. and But I will say Chuck handled it so well, so professionally. Right. He mm-hmm. was like, I am not going to let this kid take my job. And he didn't. I mean, he he showed up to every single voluntary offseason workout, mm-hmm. all the OTAs. And he could have kept away and been frustrated or whatever. He's like, I'm just not letting this kid take my job. And you know, week one rolled around and Chuck Clark was a starting strong safety yeah. and Kyle Hamilton didn't start until later in the year. And that wasn't even in Chuck's role. That was more right. of a nickel guy. So mm-hmm. Chuck handled it really well, but you know, it, it's the NFL you, players come in and you got to compete. You got to, rem- you know, keep your relevance. That's true. And, and somebody else who's in sort of a similar position would be Patrick Queen. Mm -hmm. Uh, because the Baltimore Ravens, of course, last year, um, right before the trade deadline, they traded for Roquan Smith. Um, This offseason, they drafted Trent Simpson. I know a lot of people were feeling like, oh, man, that's really the end for Patrick Queen. Mm -hmm. Now, um, me, I've been pleasantly surprised uh, that Patrick Queen right now is still on the team because as soon as they traded for Roquan Smith last year, I I thought that, oh, yeah, Patrick Queen this offseason, he's going to be gone from the Ravens. Yeah, Uh, I did too. Yeah, my preference was always that they keep him because I'm like, hey, the more talent you have, the better. But I just I didn't see it happening with them keeping him. But for him mm-hmm. to, to be there, it's been great. And um, you mentioned with Chuck Clark with how he handled uh, everything that go, that went on. And, and he requested to be traded last year, mm-hmm. but it obviously didn't happen. He stuck around. You didn't hear anything from him. You didn't he didn't make a public scene or anything like that, which showed a lot of maturity on his mm-hmm. part. Um, but yeah, somebody else who's going through a lot of the same is Patrick Queen. Yeah. Now with him, um, and, and again, you talked about you feel like they, the Baltimore Ravens, have one of the or the top linebacking duo, not in AFC North, mm-hmm. not in AFC, but in the NFL. Mm-hmm. I put my stamp on it right there. Okay, I respect mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. So with Patrick Queen, um. How do you feel about him being on this team? How do you feel about the future of Patrick Queen this year? Well, similar to what you were mentioning, I thought that the Ravens were going to trade Patrick Queen either before the draft, during the draft, or shortly after. But hearing the recent comments from Eric DaCosta saying that it was that him not picking up the fifth-year option on Queen, mm-hmm. at first I was like, oh, he's gone. Like the Ravens. But yeah. then he was like, no, like we just – that was a more of a financial, you know, contractual move than it was. We don't want Patrick queen. Like they said, Mm. they wanted to work on an extension with them. So if the Ravens and Patrick queen can find the right number, you know, if, if queen wants to be here um, and he's wants to remain next to Roquan Smith and the rest of this defense, I think that they can make something work as far as an extension. Mm. Um, But if he's, if his goal is just to go out and ball out this year and then get the biggest payday he possibly can, I respect him for it. But right. um, maybe in that case, the Ravens and him won't be, because I think some other team would offer him more money than the Ravens would be willing oh, yeah. to match after paying Roquan Lamar. Mm-hmm. But um, I do think Patrick queen has handled it. Well, um, right. he's already been, he was shown at the OTAs yesterday yeah, and I believe the true. football school as well. 
Um, so he's also in the same boat, like, Hey, I'm here. Like he, he ain't letting no young kid, you know, take a spot. Um, so I think, I think if the Ravens can keep that linebacker duo together, that would be something special. I mean, because mm -hmm. he is so good at disrupting. I know sometimes he'll miss a tackle here or there, or yeah. have a coverage lapse, but like the big splash plays that he makes are impactful. I mean, they are game altering. You can feel the energy on the defense whenever he like bursts into the backfield and blows up a yeah. play or he comes in and rocks a quarterback on a blitz. Mm -hmm. Like, and when he shoots that a gap, I mean, he comes, he comes in fast and he hit, yeah. he hits hard. Um, I, you know, some players like just the, the sheer energy they can bring. I think, you know, queen is one of those guys that when he makes a play, like his teammates are happy, his teammates are fired up and I would love to see, you know, them or keep that uh, linebacker duo intact. Yeah, I, I would love to as well. That'd be nice. And, but like you mentioned, Queen is an excellent, excellent, excellent blitzer. Mm -hmm. um, and getting to the quarterback is is of the essence. It's very important, especially in today's NFL, because it is a mm -hmm. passing league. But mm -hmm. if you can stop the passer from passing, yeah, that, that'll put you in some good shape. Um, but the Ravens right now, going into this season, where we are right now, uh, yeah. Justin Houston, not back yet, at least. Mm -hmm. Calais Campbell went over to Atlanta. Um, they just recently released Dalen Hayes, and I know he wasn't an impact player for the Ravens yet, but they just released him. So mm -hmm. now we're looking at David Ajabo, um, Adafi Away, Tyus Bowser. Um, mm -hmm. How you feel about Ravens' pass rush at this point of the offseason? I think it'll make or break their defense. Um, mm. I, mm. Think, I think the Ravens – okay, I'll say it this way. The Ravens' defense will be good – Regardless, you know, I think if these pass rushers just are average, the Ravens defense will still be good because they have great linebackers, great secondary players and a nice scheme. Um, I still think they'll have a solid defense, but the biggest difference in them having an elite defense, a top five, a top three defense is that these guys can get consistent pressure. Um, and I mm. really do. I feel like Ajabo is that guy. I mean, I do. Mm. He was a top 15 talent oh, and I saw him. I saw him mocked before his Achilles tear in the top 15 on several occasions, he has elite athleticism, ran in the four fives. He's got mm -hmm. natural bend, natural spin pass rushing moves, a feel for how to hit quarterbacks. And the one of the biggest underrated things was his ability to get that ball out. Whenever mm -hmm. he hits a quarterback, he just had a natural swipe to punch the ball out. And you saw it in college, he led, uh, he set one of the records for the most forced fumbles most uh, four sack fumbles. And then his first sack in the NFL was hello, Joe Burrow. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm going to go ahead and take that ball from you. And uh, that was beautiful. I mean, uh -huh. and that was in a game where, uh, wasn't that one of the games where we had like Anthony Brown starting was, or something? It was, uh, I think it was Josh Johnson. Well, no, not Josh Johnson. Maybe it was Anthony Brown. Yeah, yeah you might be right. The, yeah. But I mean, he's got some talent. And then uh, Owe, um, even if we saw like a the rookie year version of Oway, where he mm -hmm. makes some big splash plays and you know he has f between five and eight sacks, um, I still think I Ojabo is going to lead the team in sacks this year. I just that's my prediction, um, mm. and I and I also believe that Bowser. Um, let's not forget that like before his Achilles tear, um, I think the season that he was fully healthy, he had eight sacks. So he was starting to kind of ascend as a consistent rusher as well. I like Bowser, mm -hmm. um, but I still think there's a, it's like, for me, it's hit or miss. I go back and forth because I believe there's room for a veteran in the right. pass rush room. Mm -hmm. And I kind of want the Ravens to add a proven guy, like maybe a Leonard Floyd, Justin Houston, Frank Clark, one of those veteran guys out there. But then part of me is like, well, I just want to see what these young guys got. Like I, because if you get a veteran, it's like almost kind of assumed that they're going to get a certain amount of snaps. Like they're right. going to want their playing time. They're going to want to on third down, go out and get the quarterback. Um, and I almost feel like it's like an insurance policy. If you add a vet mm -hmm. and it's like, if, if the young guys aren't working out early in the season, they can kind of, you know, pull that leash in a little bit, let the veteran go have some more snaps. But part of me just wants to see the young guys go, um, but then part of me on the other hand is like, yeah, we could use another veteran in the room. What are your thoughts on that? I think, um, I, I will go with a veteran 
just to uh play it safe mm-hmm. um just to sort of try to cover cover everything that you possibly yeah. can um better to sort of be safe than sorry and, and it's like one of those things where okay well if you get a veteran um worst case scenario which would actually be a good case scenario uh, is if the young guys, they out there doing their thing. And it's like, mm-hmm. oh, man, we don't even need this veteran. Okay, great. Well, you got somebody that you, whether you can put them on, a, sign them to the practice squad or you just release them straight up or whatever. That's you just true. got somebody who's, you got somebody in the reserves and whatnot. So right. that's that's what I would hope for. Um, because yeah. with Adafe away, um, it's been it's been tricky with Adafe mm-hmm. away. And it's like, it's I know us as fans, we can feel frustrated for him. Mm-hmm. Um, because we see him get so close so many times. Yeah. Uh, and, and he mentioned it in a press a, about a week ago mm-hmm. um, about just how he's he's been getting close but just hasn't been able to finish yet. So it's there. It's, it's, it's right there. It's just a matter of him just making that jump. So hopefully mm-hmm. with his boy, uh, Ajabo, opposite him, mm-hmm. um, they, they, they can make a lot of noise happen. Yeah. Yeah, and those interior guys too. I mean, I think mm-hmm. those like – Matabike had five sacks last year, and I could see him with the uptick uptick in snaps. You know, if with Calais Campbell gone, right? If I could see him in the eight sack range and really emerge as one of, you know, the top ten interior rushers in the NFL, I think he has that potential. Mm. He's okay. worked with he's worked with Aaron Donald, Aaron Donald, right? Yeah, and the tools are there. I mean, and you've seen it times. You I mean there's been times where he just makes a guard look silly, like either. <laughs> you know, just knocks him right down back on his butt with his power or mm-hmm. he uses his speed um, and his, you know, gap penetrating ability to just shoot a gap and, you know, blow up a play. But um, Matabike has got all the tools. And then another guy that I really like is Brody, um, Project Washington, man. Mm-hmm. Like he has really shown some good stuff as well. And I think with some more snaps for him, yeah. he'll do some good things. And mm-hmm. then I was actually listening to uh, Mike McDonald's um, interview today. And he mentioned that he thinks Michael Pierce is an underrated oh, pass rusher. I'm so, tripping. Yeah. I'm tripping because I, 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 every time we talk about the defensive line, I always remember uh, Travis Jones, Broderick Washington, Matt Abike. Mm-hmm. I, uh, every, I always forget about Michael Pierce every single time. And mm-hmm. yeah, he's there too. So yeah, and like yeah, last year he we got hurt, and I think the first game of the season, I think. Yeah, it was early. Yeah. Yeah. And he, but I will say that he's, he's already showed up in the Ravens facility. Yeah. There was, I saw a picture of him that he looks pretty good. Um, so, you know, I, he's working on his body and he's there, he, you know, he's in, he's in the building. So I'm excited about the defensive line and the pass rush could look like, um, but I think it's just, you know, if, the, if it's elite, if the pass rush is able to get there with four guys consistently, that would especially, be especially, yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's like in our division, man, we got to deal with Deshaun, Deshaun Watson, Amari mm-hmm. Cooper. Uh, they just traded for a who? Elijah Moore. Right. They got Njoku. They got weapons over there. Let's not act like they don't. And, you know, uh, mm-hmm. the Bengals, you you already know. Yeah. You know? So it's like <laughs> yeah. you, want as ma- <laughs> you want as many guys uh, in the secondary to drop into coverage as possible mm-hmm. to make – because it, it, it takes one guy to get a hand on a ball – and you get a lucky bounce, you get a turnover or whatever. So mm-hmm. if you can get that consistently where those four guys can get pressure on the quarterback, I think we'll have a top five defensive unit. Oh, yeah, for sure. That'd be nice. Now, last question before we get out of here. What do you feel the Ravens' floor and ceiling is this year? Mm. Mm. Are we just – we're assuming health, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so if we're relatively healthy – I don't see – man, I'm going to sound like a homer again, man. But, it's all good. Uh, I don't see the Ravens losing – or I'm sorry, I don't see the Ravens winning less than 11 games. Um, oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I, I, I think, think that sounds too homery. And, and I think their ceiling is uh, 15, 15 type of win season. Um, I mean, this is a good team, man. I mean – Yeah, it is. I think – I really think they're – the Raven, I'm, I know – I talk about the Ravens and the Ravens is my team and my channel, but I just looking at the roster top to bottom and it's not just the rock. It's like you got so many players now that are healthy. Mm -hmm. Like, can we not forget that like Ronnie Stanley 
your starting left mm-hmm. tackle, who is one of like when you're building a roster, you're looking at quarterback, left tackle, you know, edge rusher. Like that's one of the spots that is important. Mm-hmm. And Ronnie Stanley didn't even get out there until like week five last year, and then he was working on working off from injury. Mm-hmm. And so I mean, and then J.K. Dobbins, I think oh, he's yeah. about to explode. Um, Bowser healthy, like a lot of guys that were coming and recovering off major injuries, you know, and a new exciting scheme that's going to, I think going to catch some teams off guard, especially earlier in the year. Mm. Um, You know, because we have not really seen a Lamar Jackson offense without Greg Roman. Like we saw a couple couple games, Lamar's rookie year with uh, who was it? Uh, Morning. Uh, right? Yeah. Marty morning. Yeah. Yeah. We saw a couple games of it. And then we got Greg Roman for years. So we don't we really don't know what it's going to look like. And I think it's going to mm. catch a lot of teams off guard. That's a really, really good point. Didn't think about that. It's true. Yeah, we never seen Lamar without Giro, really. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that, that, that makes me that much more excited uh, for this upcoming season, just to think about that alone. But, Noah, appreciate you very, very, mm-hmm. very, very much uh, for coming on, and especially, again, coming through on such – uh, short notice too. Yeah, um, man, my honor. For for one more time for everybody, let them know where they can find you at. I'll have everything down below in the description too, just to make it easier. But let everybody know where they can find you at before we get out of here. I appreciate it, man. Uh, so for sure. just for the flock on YouTube, um, F O R T H E flock, um, and then I I'm on Twitter as well for the flock, but with a four, uh, the number instead of spelled out. So yeah, man. Um, would love to see you guys on here and uh engraven i really appreciate you having me on oh, for uh, sure really appreciate everything you've done in the ravens community man you've been awesome that's no, all good man i appreciate you coming on man and again for those that just to get y'all backstory i asked mm-hmm. him today to come on and he mm-hmm. he was able to come on today so <laughs> shout out to him for that man so that's super super late notice but anyway Appreciate it. Thank you, team. Keep it clean. Appreciate y'all watching. Make sure you subscribe to his channel. Uh, Follow him on Twitter as well. Everything is down below in the description. And on that note, we out. Exit out the door. Use his favorite team with a ball.